Evolution. Evolution is a lie. Some people, they ask me why. Science, science is what I hear them cry. But even this, they do not knowing why. Science is good, a conceptual tool, but not for truth, an absolute rule. Your reasoning can be wrong, totally fail even lead you down to hell. Truth is eternal, it has always been, and it doesn't come because of what you've seen. Senses are good, but you must not lean for truth on theories devised by men. Info is good, but is never found in a lump of matter but in an intelligent mind, a divine creator. From the mind of a person, a glorious savior for wisdom and knowledge, he's the only source of such wonderful treasures. Laws abound of nature, logic and love, Surely all such is from heaven above, from the mind of God revealed in love. So we could rule and for his glory live. So evolution is a lie, upon it you must not rely. Or in sin you will die, God's word is the truth, on that you must rely. No, dear friends, evolution, it does not give you a solution and it does not give you a beginning. It gives you nothing but, of course, what the heart of man wants. It gives him a lie. Because you see, dear friends, as God says, the heart, the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And so therefore, a heart that is deceitful will always gravitate towards that which is deceitful. It will always gravitate to the lie. And you see, we come into the world, we are conceived in sin, we are born in sin, and we live in sin, we live out of the lie and we live the lie because of these deceitful hearts that we have. No, there is no justification. I challenge anybody, anybody to give me one ounce of justification for evolution. Some people, they cry, science, science. But again, you see science. Science is just a tool. It's a tool that we use to examine the evidence. It does not give you truth. Science does not give you truth. It's just something that you use to examine the evidence. And the evidence, if you put aside your deceitful heart, if you put aside the bias with which you come into the world, that is against God and towards sin, towards the lie. If you seek the truth, if you want the truth, and you use science properly, you use science truthfully to examine the evidence, well, it will lead you to the one who created the universe, the world, and everything in it, and the world who made you. There is no evidence, there is no justification, scientific or otherwise, for evolution. 
It was in the beginning just simply a philosophy of man, an idea of man, a thought of man. Not Charles Darwin. He was not the originator. He was a plagiarizer. Yeah? He took the thoughts, he took the philosophies of other men and he made them popular. He was not the originator of evolution as many people think. But just an idea, just a philosophy of man. And of course came from men who were God-haters, just the same as the people of Lincoln and Lincolnshire today. That's, you see, the natural state and condition. A heart deceitful and desperately wicked. And a heart that will always, always gravitate towards the lie. Loves the lie and lives out of the lie and hates the truth. The natural state, you see, of men and women, the Bible says, is that they hate God and hate their neighbor. And as long as men and women are in that natural state that is never been regenerated by the power of God, never been made new by God, will always gravitate, will always seize hold of that which is deceitful, anything, anything to justify their ungodliness anything to justify the lie, anything to justify their rebellion against God. And so you see by God's arch enemy, the father of lies, Satan the devil, surely, surely the perpetrator, surely the one at the root of evolutionary thinking. Hand you such a philosophy of man on a plate, you know. Here he says to your deceitful heart, here is a wonderful way by which you can justify your calling yourself an atheist. But of course there is no such thing, says God, as an atheist. Such a thing does not exist. There is not such a one as an atheist on the whole planet Earth. Because all men, all men know that God is. You know that God is just the same way that I do. Because you see, dear friends, that's something that's stamped upon your innermost being. When a child is born, before it knows anything, it knows that God is. So you see, friends, all men have the knowledge of God. But here's the truth, says God. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and wickedness of men who because of that wickedness hold the truth in unrighteousness. Don't want there to be a God because they've got rebellions, because they've got lying hearts, hearts that are deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked and desperately do not want there to be a God and desperately look for and search for any means by which they can seek in their fallen unbelieving minds to explain God away and enable them to live in, delight in, wallow in, sw swim in their sinful natures and in a sinful world. So you see, the one who calls itself an atheist has no justification for such. An awful lot of assumptions are made, but you know, think about, let me give you one or two things, you know, to think about. You know, there are universal laws. I mean, where do laws come from? Just supposing for a moment that there was a bang, you know, a magical bang, you know. Nobody knows where the chemicals came from that you need to make a bang. 
but there was this big bang and this big bang it produced a big lump of matter yeah but of course uh, well having spent 15 years in military service I never heard of never saw never heard of an explosion that made anything explosions are destructive but this magical bang it brought a great big lump of matter into being but pray tell me how do you get laws out of a lump of matter i mean what about the law of logic i got out of bed this morning so i'm no longer in my bed you see that's logical of course it is we use logic all day long every single day it's a universal law the law of logic you use it i use it we all use it but where did the law of logic come from you don't get laws out of matter laws come from an intelligent mind what about the laws of nature what about the uniformity in nature as you call it i mean the sun came up yesterday morning the sun came up this morning will the sun come up tomorrow morning well if you're an evolutionist do you call yourself an atheist atheistic evolutionist well you've got no guarantee of that because well according to evolutionary thinking you know the universe is in a state of flux always changing but of course you know that's not true that's not the world that's not the universe that you live in you know you know ladies and gentlemen could just move over a bit please you know as well as i do that the sun will come up tomorrow morning just the same as today why because of the laws of nature because of the laws that god has embedded in his universe that he created that's why the sun will come up tomorrow morning just as it did this morning and yesterday you can guarantee it because of the laws of nature which are really the laws of god that he has embedded laws don't come from matter laws come from an intelligent mind I mean, what about the reality of moral absolutes? You know, people say, well, there is no such a thing as absolute morality. But again, you see, that's not the world that you live in. There's a daft, there's a daft evolutionist, an unbeliever, you know, an, an atheist. He's a professor of biology in berkeley university in california he's after the stripe of the daft dawkins you know him and this man rosenberg from california oh he's written a book about atheism you know and he says this he says that there is no no absolute morality you know in fact you know he 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 makes this these very points that i'm making you today he says he says life is meaningless he says all all that you are is just little clumps of matter utterly absolutely meaningless no meaning to life none whatsoever but guess what the professor of biology in berkeley university in california doesn't live that way and neither do you you try it you know you say hey and there's no morality there's no rules there's no absolute law you go out onto the a a46 you go out onto the a46 and you drive at 90 miles an hour yeah and try it for long enough and i tell you you'll be in court you'll be in court you'll be fined and you might even be jailed if you cause an accident you see you don't live that way you have moral standards or oh, they don't come up to god's standards they don't even come up to your own standards you know 
But you have a basis, you have a standard of morality, unless that is you've seared your conscience as with a hot iron. Unless you're one of those wicked, extremely wicked people that no longer have any sense of what's right or wrong. So there are absolute, there is such a thing as absolute morality, and I'm holding it in my hand. God's rule book, God's standard, and that's the standard by which we will all be judged. So you see, the atheist, the evolutionist, makes an awful lot of assumptions wrong. Wrong assumptions, I dare say. And then, of course, well, the practice, you know, it's rather like, you know, that word that we call hypocrisy, because the practice doesn't always agree with the belief, you know. I've never found, you know, we get, we get the accusation thrown at us, you know, that, that we are hypocrites, that we don't always you know, practice what we preach, but then, of course, well, I freely acknowledge that. I'm still a sinner, but saved by grace and forgiven by God. But you see, the evolutionist, the atheist, doesn't practice what he or she preaches either, you know. You don't hold to your beliefs, you know. You see that there is no God. But you live off the back of God's power and strength. You drink His water, you eat His food, you breathe His air. You know, like the little child, the little toddler. Mommy holds the toddler in her lap, and the child raises its hand and slaps its mother across the face. The child couldn't do that itself. The child couldn't do that if mother wasn't holding the child in her lap. You rage and rail against God, but you do it. You couldn't do it unless God was upholding you, sustaining you. Unless God, unless there was a God, you could not even have a meaningful thought. You could not even think to argue against God. He has given you the gift of reason. Unlike all the other creatures God has made great and small, there's none of them. There's none of them with knowledge. There's none of them with a conscience. Do you know what the word conscience means? It means with knowledge. Con, with, science, knowledge. With knowledge. Human beings have knowledge. They have a conscience. All the other creatures do not. And you have a conscience that testifies. It's God's sheriff. It's God's agent within you. It accuses you or it excuses you, whether you do right or whether you do wrong. But then, of course, the contrary to the Christian worldview, well, you know that God, God created the universe, everything, that God made the world, you know, for His own glory. The contrary to the Christian worldview, well, it's just a sheer impossibility. You know, that there, there is no, there is no other justification. And I'm told, I don't walk in the realms of scientists, but I'm told by people who do know, I'm told that there are many, many scientists, not necessarily Christians, who are changing their mind about evolution. They're beginning to acknowledge that it doesn't hold water, that it's not justifiable. So Christianity, you see, uh, well, you know, evolution just cannot, cannot prove the contrary, not at all. An atheist has, a knowledge, has knowledge, but an evolutionist has knowledge, but you can't justify it. Do you want to do so, young man? Instead of just walking by, smiling? I mean, where does man get knowledge from? And don't tell me books. Don't tell me books. Where did the author of the books get the knowledge? They got it from books. And where did the author of their books get the knowledge from? All the way back to the beginning, again. 
You've got a lump of matter that comes from a bang. But how do you get knowledge out of matter? How do you get life? How do you get motion? How do you get being out of matter? That's an impossibility. You cannot, you cannot justify man's knowledge. In Christ, the Bible says, are hid all the treasures of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. If God had not given man knowledge when he created him, then man could not do science, he could not do engineering, he could not do mathematics, he could not do anything at all if God had not given him knowledge. So you see, what, what the evolutionist does is, he or she suppresses this truth, you know, the truth that he or she is able to know things and do things, wonderful things, like philosophy, logic, chemistry, mathematics, science, all these wonderful, wonderful things that man can do by the gifts that God has given to him. But it's the truth, the truth that God has revealed to us and the knowledge that has, God has given to us that enables mankind to do these wonderful things. But of course, that truth, that truth is held. That truth is held down in wickedness an evil wickedness by the evolutionist, by the atheist so-called, because he or she cannot justify the knowledge that man has. So evolutionist, again, the man, uh, Mr. Rosenberg, the professor of biology, he says, quote, he says, all we are is just little bits of carbon-based lust bundle, bundles. That's all that man is. Just carbon-based lust bundle, bundles. But of course, of course, Mr. Rosenberg, he doesn't live that way, and neither do you. You are supremely gifted. You have gifts from God that you use in your lives day by day. You're more, more than just a piece of chemical fizz that climbed out of some primordial sludge. The Bible tells us man's origin. God created the heaven and the earth and God made man and woman in the beginning in the image of God, pure righteousness and a true knowledge of God. But now, of course, all that's gone. Man has sinned that away. And no longer is he in the image of God. No longer does he have a true knowledge of God. No longer does he have a perfect righteousness. Now he's in the image of Satan. Now he lives. He believes the lie, and he lives out of the lie. And it's Satan who's the father of lies. Now, man, you see, is in the image of the enemy of God, of Satan. But then that's why Jesus Christ came into the world, the only begotten Son of the Father, sent into the world to rescue men and women from the snare, from the clutches of the devil, of Satan, and to restore men and women to the image of God, restore them to a true knowledge of God and a perfect righteousness through God's Son, Jesus Christ. Why he came into the world, you see, why he lived, why he died, and why he rose again from the dead so that those who believe would be saved. So you see, the universe and reality, 
They are, you know, they are fixed. They are like God Himself. They are immutable. They are unchangeable. God says concerning His own being, I am the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. That's a given. And so you see, that which God has created, the universe, reality, are as God is, eternal, unchangeable. And everything you see, everything around you, the world, the universe, humankind, all of God's creation, grounded in the character and in the nature of God. The universe, you see, is not eternal. The universe, you see, does not, as we know it now at least anyway, does not continue on forever. Some people, they, well, the atheist, the evolutionist argues and says, well, everything's just the same as it has always been. Of course, that's because we can't give you a beginning. Only the Bible gives you the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But there's a day coming when there'll be a change, a cataclysmic change, a radical change, when this world order, as we know it now, will be changed. A new heaven and a new earth, says God, in which wherein will dwell only righteous. The righteous, that is. Those who have been declared righteous by God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. But a new heaven and a new earth. No curse, no sin, no death. None of the, none of the sicknesses, none of the evil, none of the wickedness that we see and that man just cannot explain himself. Evolution doesn't give you an explanation, you know, for the wickedness that you see in your world today. It doesn't explain pedophilia. It doesn't explain why men and women are unfaithful in marriage. It doesn't explain why men and women go about for sure, sheer pleasure, killing and slaughtering one another unborn children and adults too gives you no ex explanation for it at all and neither of course do the politicians or the philosophers or the scientists only the bible gives you a an intelligent an intelligent understanding of where evil comes from out of your heart and my heart out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murder, fornication, all kinds of sexual immorality, blasphemy, theft, all comes pumping out of the hearts of men and women like you and I and fills God's world, God's beautiful world that He created perfect in the beginning. We spoiled it, we've ruined it, and we've ruined each other, and we've ruined ourselves by sin. Sin came into the world by one man, the first man, the representative of the human race. Adam, his name was. And he passed that sin nature on to his posterity and death with it. Why do people have to die? A young lady once asked me the question. There's only one answer to it from the Bible. The wages of sin is death. That's where it comes from. But all these things are inexplicable to your evolutionary mindset, worldview, to your atheistic, your godless world. So science, you see, like I say, it's just a conceptual tool, you know. It's a, you know, it. it it doesn't give you, it doesn't give you truth. It only examines the evidence. It only comes to a decision as to what is true and what is not. It does not. It's only a conceptual tool that man uses 
and generally speaking uses to the detriment because they make of it false science. In our Christian community we have scientists. We have some of the top scientists in the world. Men and women who are firm believers in Jesus Christ and in my gospel. And they are, I tell you, if they were here, if they were here, they could wipe the floor with any one of your Dawkinses or Rosenbergs. No, no, friends, science, just a tool, just a conceptual tool. You see, friends, you've got a prejudicial mind. You've got a bias against God. You've got a mind that's in hatred towards God and towards your neighbor. You see, your senses, observation, man's, uh, man's senses, you know. What you see, one man, one man said to me on one occasion, he said, I will not believe in anything I cannot see. I said to him, well, you do not believe in love then. You do not believe in the law of gravity then. Huh? What about what about these laws? What about what about all these wonderful things in your universe that you cannot see but God has put there? They're not there by accident. Laws don't come from matter. Laws come from an intelligent mind. And that mind, that mind is is God's mind. What about death? Again, what about death? Yeah. According to evolutionary, godless Darwinianism, death is just merely, is just simply a culling of the herd. Darwinianism in action. Contrary to that, the Bible says, it's the judgment of God. It is appointed divinely appointed, God appointed for man once to die. After that comes the judgment. Then the atheist, then the evolutionist stands before God and gives account for their foolish, foolish world view. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God, says God. So you see, we know things, friends, we know things that would never, never have been discovered by man, would never have been known by humanity, not even by investigation. Things that only God himself could have revealed to us. But that includes, that includes God's salvation too. That's by revelation. You see, I can't persuade you. I don't even try to persuade you. If I could persuade you to make a commitment to be a Christian today, well, somebody else could come down the street later in the afternoon and persuade you not to be. You see, unless God reveals himself to you, unless God in the gospel and generally in the preaching of the gospel, unless he comes to you and reveals the truth to you, reveals himself to you, and he does so in the face of his son, Jesus Christ, sent into the world to save men and women from their godless Darwinian evolution, atheistic evolutionism. To save people from such blindness, stupidity and such darkness. But then I have to confess. I have to confess. They tell me that confession is good for the soul. I have to confess that I was once in that place. I was once blind. I was once stupid. I was once in wickedness and sin just like you today. But it was by God's revelation, you see, God came and revealed himself to me in Jesus. 
And that's why you see I can speak of these things to you here today. That's why, that's why, you know, I, I can tell you the truth as it is in Jesus. See, unless, unless he opens your eyes to see, to behold, you know, that the world, the universe was made for God's glory, for the glory of his Son. The Bible says that all things were made by him and for him, for his glory, the Son of God, the divine Logos. Not for your glory. Yeah. The world, you know, the universe does not revolve around you. That might come as a shock to some of you. And everybody else on the planet is not here for your pleasure. You know, to do your will. That might come as a shock to you as well. It's here. It's here for the glory of God. And God will be glorified in all his creation. God will be glorified in his universe. God will be glorified in the human race. God will be glorified in the believer and unbeliever. God will be glorified either in your salvation or your damnation. But he will be glorified in you. But we're here today to tell you, explain these things to you, that maybe, perhaps, just maybe some of these things will make you think and clear the smoke from the room so that I can present Jesus Christ to you. Amen, Jesus, who is so wonderful, so wonderful, so wonderful, able to save, I tell you, the deepest died atheist. We know, we know of men and women who have, I, I tell you, with a have sworn on their lives that they would never believe in God. But their minds have been changed, not by men, not by the church, but by God himself. And today, and today are believers, saved, saved by the power, the power of God unto salvation. You see, Jesus is that wonderful, you know, even men and women who rail against him, and real against his messenger, you know? That's why we, well, we try very hard, at least anyway, we try not to take offense, you know, when you come at us, fighting and railing and squabbling and saying bad and nasty things about us. We try not to take offense because we know we understand where you're coming from. We were once there. We were once blind. We were once stupid. We were once unbelieving. And now we stand here today, not because of any good thing in me. Now we stand here today declaring the truth of the Christian faith and the Christian worldview. Not because we did something wonderful and marvelous, but because God came, Christ came, and saved us by his mighty power. Not only changed our mind, that is, gave us repentance. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, God says. The wrong thinking, you see. The wrong thinking needs to be changed. We've got fallen minds. We've got broken minds. Our minds need to be fixed. They need to be turned around. They need to be healed. They need to be... They need to be brought to that place where we can use them properly and align our thoughts with God's thoughts. And then you find the practice changing. Let the wicked forsake his way. A man, a woman's way is their practice of living in God's world. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. You change the thinking. You give the man repentance. He changes his mind, his world view. And his practice begins to change as well. He begins to live. He begins to embrace God's thoughts after him and live them by the power of the gospel, of course. But this is what Jesus does for unbelievers. You know, 
It matters not what kind of an unbeliever you are. Call yourself an evolutionist, call yourself. Call yourself a, an atheist. It matters not, you know. Maybe false religion, you know. There's all, all kinds of ways that men and women, you know, seek to use to dodge the bullet. For some people it's Darwin. Some people it's Allah Muhammad. Some, t some people it's the Pope of Rome. Some people, you know, it's all, all kinds of things, you know. Anything but acknowledge the truth. It all comes down to the same plain thing, unbelief. That's the curse of humanity. It's the curse that lies upon you in Lincoln City today. That's what you need to be saved from. Your unbelief. You need to be brought. You need to be brought to faith. And that's something I can't do. That's beyond my pay grade. Yeah. That, that's above my station. Only God can do that. But God does, you see, through the preaching of the gospel, God does that very thing. That's why God has ordained the preaching of the gospel. That's why he says to his messengers in every day and generation, go you into all the world and preach the gospel. Because by that means God kindles faith in the hearts and minds of men and women. But God must give it. I can't. I can't give you faith, sir. I wish I could. I wish I could. I wish I could. Well, there you go. You haven't got it, have you? You haven't. Nah, 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 nah. It's only God. You see, it's the gift of God. The Bible says so. It's the gift of God, lest any man should boast. Because when anybody enters the kingdom of God, by way of repentance and faith, I tell you, there's nobody... No genuine Christian, no one who is a Christian in reality, born of God, brought to repentance and faith, there's not one of them that will stand up in public and say, I am a member of the kingdom of God because I was a good person, because I did this, that, or the other. They will tell you honestly and sincerely, I did nothing, nothing. God did it all. It was the grace of God. He melted, He broke. He softened my heart. He inclined me to believe. He brought me to repentance. He brought me to believe on His dear, dear Son, Jesus, who He sent into the world to rescue me, to save me from sin and death and all the curse that lies upon humanity because of its unbelief. And why Jesus, read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All kinds of people come to Jesus. All kinds of problems, family problems, problems with evil forces. And Jesus tells each and every one of them the same. Only believe. Only believe. Trust in God. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Faith is the answer. Faith apart from works of any kind whatsoever. You have to leave your works at the door. You have to leave your perceived goodness at the door. You have to leave the world, the flesh, the devil, you have to loo, leave the false science. You have to leave the garbage and nonsense of evolution at the door. Because the gate is straight, my friends. It's straight. And you can't get through that gate carrying baggage of any kind. Simply, yes, madam, I do. Simply. Simply only by the grace of God can you get through that gate. He must draw you through it. Because no man can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them. Jesus says so. No one can come to me unless, unless 
unless my Father gives them to me, says Jesus. Impossible with you, but with God nothing shall be impossible. Nothing. Not even your salvation. If that is. If that is, you believe. On the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. You like a copy of God's Word? We got Bibles, we got New Testaments, we got all kinds of literature you'd like something to read. Clear your mind of some of that evolutionary nonsense that you've been indoctrinated with. You'd like something to read? Come and ask us. Gladly, it's all free, no cost to you. Take God's Word home with you. Read for yourself and see what great things God has done. That men and women, that sinners might be saved by the blood of the Lamb. To faith in God's Son, Jesus Christ. You'd like a copy of God's Word, you come and ask for one. May God bless you. And of mercy, mercy, Lincoln, mercy upon your precious, precious souls.